a mix between Bridge to Terabithia and the Iron Giant? How can I say no to that? Like seriously. A monster calls. It makes it sound kind of evil. It's it's not like that. So a monster calls is based off of a book. Of course, I have not read said book. It stars Lewis McDougal as a kid named Connor. And you know, it's a typical story of a kid in school. His life is not the best. He gets bullied. But the thing that's really dragging his life down in the dumps is that his mother, played by Felicity Jones, is dying of cancer. So to help him cope with the hand he's been dealt, he imagines up this big tree monster, voiced by Liam Neeson, of course. The monster sits him down, he's like, all right, Connor O'Malley, I'm going to help you with your pain. And now we have a pretty good movie. Now, when I say this movie is a mix of Bridge to Terabithia and the Iron Giant, it's more like Bridge to Terabithia. Not just because the kid makes up something in his mind that helps him out, but these different scenarios that come from his mind and from the stories this big monster is telling him reflect what he's going through in real life. And I love stuff like that. Now, first and foremost, I'm gonna talk about this monster because he's not exactly Groot. You know, when the trailers came out, everyone was like, Oh, this thing is a lot like Groot. And yeah, while he may have some of the same physical features as Groot, you know that's not the point. And normally in a movie like this, they show you like just a little bit of him. He's not the main focus of the film. You don't see him all the time and you leave the movie going, I wish I saw him more. But no, after leaving this film, I'd say I'd saw a pretty good amount of this monster. They showed him just the right amount. It wasn't too much where it was like fatigue. And Liam Neeson as the voice of this thing, I thought was awesome. And yeah, they did the same thing with his voice that they did with Benedict Cumberbatch's voice when he voiced Smaug the Dragon. They made it deeper and more gravelly and he it made him sound like a monster, and I thought it was really cool. I want to say he did the motion capture for it, but I don't know for sure. It looks like he did, though, because if you look at this thing's face, you can kind of see Liam Neeson's face in there. Or at least, I can see it. What, you can't see it? And another thing I like about this creature is that he doesn't sugarcoat anything. He tells the kid, he's like, look, here's how it is. I love it when movies and characters in movies do that. They don't sugarcoat, they don't BS anything. They're like, look, kid, here's the truth about life itself. It can get dark sometimes, and sometimes we just gotta deal with that. Oh no, it's not fun, but it's necessary. As for the rest of the acting, I thought it was really good. The kid, Lewis McDougal, I haven't seen him in anything else, but I thought he held his own pretty well. When he's supposed to be sad, he looks sad. When he's supposed to be angry, he looks pissed. I hope I see this kid in more stuff, because I thought it was pretty good in this film. Felicity Jones is the one where I was like, holy crap, I can't believe I'm about to see you kick Imperial butt in Rogue One. She plays a sweet mother who is dying of cancer, so she's weak, and the makeup was very well done. Sigourney Weaver's in this film, and I think she pulls off a pretty legit British accent. And at first you're like, am I gonna hate this character, or am I gonna soften up to her eventually? I'm not gonna answer that question. You gotta go see the movie. As for the story in this film, it was great. It did slow down a couple of times, but I sat down and I really thought about it. You know, most of the movies I watch, especially lately, are the big, high-octane superhero sci-fi action films, as you see behind me. You know, I'm a 21-year-old dude in college. That's my jam. But that doesn't mean I don't have a soft spot for those dramas. Like I said, Bridge to Terabithia, The Iron Giant, those are dramas. Sure, they have their fantastical elements in there, but so does this movie. And this is a film where the visual effects are a means to tell the story, and I thought it was brilliantly done. I don't know if these visual effects are going to win Best Visual Effects at the Oscars, because... Mm, but they were still great. But like I said, there were some scenes where it slowed down a little too much, and I do take some points off for that, but there were some other scenes where I saw myself in this kid when he's just pissed. Because let's face it, we're all human beings, we all had that moment when we were kids where we're just so mad at the world and how our lives are going that we just want to go ahead and break everything in our room. Hell, we even have those moments now. So when this kid is going ballistic and this monster is right behind him doing the same thing, that was great to see, and I was like, yeah, you know what kid, you deserve this, smash everything. So yeah the movie connects to you. As for the score, I thought it was really good. It was written by Fernando Velasquez, and there's a lot of, like, you know, sad piano in there, and strings, you know, etc. It's kind of a generic score, really. But I gotta say, it worked for this movie. So in the end, A Monster Calls had great acting, great music, and a really good theme, really good morals for life. This is a good movie for kids to watch now. Like, 10 years ago, when Bridge to Terabithia came out, I sat down, watched it in a movie theater, and I left the movie a different person. I feel like this movie could be the Bridge to Terabithia for this decade, which really makes sense because both films are based off of a book, which is a huge compliment for this film, by the way. So for a monster calls, I will say, go see this movie while it's in theaters. So a monster calls, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.